Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos, Andrew Cunanan, and Plum Island. Tales of hauntings, murder, and scary mysteries. Every week, Twisted Twos dives into a pair of uniquely terrifying true stories that are worthy of a more in-depth look. This week, we focus on the notorious killer of Gianni Versace and the mysterious conspiracy theories about an island off the coast of New York. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted Twos. Number 1. Andrew Cunanan With an IQ of 147, Andrew Cunanan was always a smart kid, according to his family. But what drove such a bright child to go on a murderous, multi-state killing spree, murdering his friends, a real estate mogul, and famous fashion designer Gianni Versace? Andrew was a flamboyant type of guy. At a young age, he attended a prestigious school in the La Jolla neighborhood in San Diego. By the time he was a teenager, he had gained a reputation for being talkative as well as a compulsive liar. He would create fantastical tales about his personal life and family, and then at 19, he suffered a major turning point in his life. His father went back to the Philippines to escape charges of embezzlement, leaving the entire family behind. It was also at this time his deeply religious mother found out he was gay, which led to a lot of arguments and tension between them. In 1987, he enrolled to study American history at the University of California in San Diego, but dropped out after just two years. He then moved to San Francisco, where there was a more welcoming gay community. Becoming a fixture of the nightlife in the Castro district, Andrew mixed and mingled with the wealthy, often hooking up relationships with rich, older men who would support his lifestyle. He was jet-setting around, also frequenting gay clubs and gatherings in Hillcrest and La Jolla in San Diego, as well as in Scottsdale, Arizona. It was at one of these parties in 1990 when Andrew met Gianni Versace. They exchanged words briefly, and since then, Cunanan liked to tell the story of how he had become friends with the fashion mogul. In 1996, Andrew's wealthy boyfriend and patron, Norman Blanchford, broke up with him. Norman couldn't stand his extravagance and his lies any longer, and this sent Andrew into a downward spiral. He maxed out his credit cards and began going back to his old business of dealing drugs while also using them himself frequently. Jeffrey Trail, who first met Andrew in 1992, was in the military and at the time was still uncomfortable with his sexuality and admired Andrew's comfort in his. The two became good friends, but at some point, Jeffrey became tired of Andrew's lies and antics and slowly withdrew. In 1996, Trail left San Diego and moved to Minneapolis, and it was here that he met Andrew's ex-boyfriend, David Madsen, who also lived in the city. Andrew saw it as an opportunity to reconnect with an ex-lover and his friend, and oddly began making it a habit of showing up at their houses unannounced. On April 27, 1997, Andrew invited Jeffrey over to David's house, the later of which was out of town. The two got into an argument, and that's when Andrew savagely beat him with a claw hammer before hiding his body in a rolled-up rug. Six days after that, police found David's body on the east shore of Rush Lake. He had died from a gunshot wound to the head and back. Andrew had snapped and he then drove to Chicago and killed 72-year-old real estate mogul Lee Miglin. It's unclear whether the two were acquainted prior to the murder, but many believe that they were. Miglin was found inside his garage. His hands and feet were bound in duct tape, including his face, save for holes through his nose. Andrew had stabbed him more than 20 times, then cut his throat using a hacksaw. After this murder, Cunanan was placed on the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. He took Miglin's car but decided to steal another by the time he reached Penceville, New Jersey. While there, he shot and killed cemetery caretaker William Reese in order to take his pickup truck. Despite the extensive manhunt, Andrew managed to evade authorities for two months after these killings. In the two months as a fugitive, he hid in plain sight in Miami, Florida, and even used his real name to pawn something at a shop. On July 15th, he then showed up at Versace's Miami mansion where he shot him on the front steps. A witness and police officer tried to pursue him, but again he was able to escape. They later found evidence of Andrew's presence in the area, including the pickup truck stolen from Reese, a pawn shop ticket, clothes, a check, a passport, and newspaper clippings about his previous killings. 
A week later, with authorities bearing down on him, Andrew decided to commit suicide by shooting himself inside a Miami Beach houseboat. Andrew never expressed any clear reason for his actions. Many speculate he was upset because he believed he was HIV positive, but during the autopsy, it was discovered that he was negative. Others believe he most likely must have had an undiagnosed mental illness. There was no suicide note and little personal belongings found in the boathouse. The only thing police discovered were multiple tubes of hydrocortisone cream and a collection of fiction novels by C.S. Lewis. Number 2. Plum Island When a strange-looking animal corpse washed ashore in Montauk, New York in 1998, many speculated it had come from the nearby Plum Island. Known for building number 257, the island has been shrouded in multiple conspiracy theories over the years. It's widely believed that strange things are happening on Plum Island. Everything from genetically altering animals, creating biological weapons, and of course, other government secrets. Measuring just three miles long and one mile wide, the island seems like a tiny speck off the tip of Long Island in New York. It belonged to several different families over the years, and in 1899 it was purchased by the United States government because it was strategically placed at the entrance of the Long Island Sound, a key path for New York's most important harbors. Later on, Fort Terry was built there initially as a sentry post before evolving into an anti-submarine post during World War II. Afterwards, it was taken over by the Army Chemical Corps before eventually landing in the hands of the Department of Agriculture, who created the Plum Island Animal Disease Center, which is otherwise known to conspiracy theorists as Building 257. The entire island then became a tightly guarded property with numerous signs telling visitors to stay away. Today, tourists and any other boats are turned away the moment they venture too close. So what's inside Building Number 257? This was supposed to be the main lab where various animal-borne diseases were studied. Primarily, they examined the highly contagious foot and mouth disease, which infects hooved animals and can easily spread, causing a threat to livestock and the production of meat and milk products. They focused on finding vaccines and treatments while also looking into the possibility it could be used for biological warfare since the spread of the disease could theoretically collapse a nation's economy. Ever since 9-11 happened, Security was intensified across Plum Island. The fear stemming from the possibility that the enemy would use the harmful pathogens inside against the public. As for conspiracy theories, there are a few thrown out there. First, that biological and chemical weapons testing are undertaken there. In a way, this is true. As mentioned before, contagious diseases were studied for the possibility that they could be used as biological weapons. After the Geneva Protocol, this study reportedly came to a halt but many still believe remnants of dangerous diseases and chemicals are still harbored there. Second, remember the Montauk Monster. There's a popular theory that Plum Island is involved in creating mutated animals. The Montauk Monster is believed to have been one that escaped, since nobody has clearly identified exactly what it is to this day. Third is that the island is the reason for the spread of Lyme disease in the town of Old Lyme in Connecticut starting in 1975. A book by Michael Carroll asserts that the Plum Island Lab couldn't successfully control the disease inside and purposely let it loose onto the mainland. Although there's some proof Plum Island did study Lyme disease at some point, it's still up in the air whether they caused the spread of it or not. Finally, perhaps one of the most controversial theories is that over 2,000 Nazi scientists were recruited and stationed there for a top secret project. While it's true America and much of their allies hired Nazi scientists after World War II in a program called Project Paperclip, there's no direct proof Nazi scientists were stationed at the island, but of course it could be a possibility. It's said that the scientists were hired for testing and creating biological weapons, some of which were tested on mass livestock right there on Plum Island. Despite the fact that since 2008 the lab facility there has been transferred to a more secure location in Kansas and that the island has since been sold off, many still believe that the location and all of its mysterious happenings are critical. There's still debate on whether Plum Island will be preserved or eventually sold off to private real estate developers, and we'll just have to wait to see if that happens. So there were two of the most murderous and strange stories around. The world can be a crazy place and Twisted 2's is sure to show you why.
If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe and check out some of our other videos we know you'll enjoy. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.